Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Lisa with Lisa's Faith and Budget Planning channel. I am here today because it's been a week since I videoed anything that has to do with faith and my prayerful planner. Um, the last video I put up was July 1st or right after July 1st and I haven't done anything since. <laughs> I have worked on it. In fact, I've worked on it every day except for the holiday weekend which was 4th of July and I have just gone back and went through third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh, <laughs> um, recovering from the holiday weekend, and went back and did all the scripture writing, and thought about and meditated on my identity in Christ. And so, what I thought I would do today is do a flip through for the first seven days of July, and hear my prayers, uh, scripture writing, and journaling prompt, as well as the um, identity in Christ challenge which um, is just, it's not really something you really write a lot on that's different. The verses aren't any different. The, um, the journaling prompt is the same here. It's the same information. But um, the way I write it and the way I've kind of gotten into a rhythm of what it means um, has changed a little bit. So I like how um, I'm working on it. So I thought I'd share that with you today. So I have already got my pages stick with stickers, so I'll show you all the stickers I used. I will show you, it's the usual stickers I use um, with the Happy Planner Faith sticker books and the florals. And I'm trying to see if there was anything else that I used. I think that was it, and maybe this Faith sticker book. These are my go-to Faith stickers, and the florals are just gorgeous, so it doesn't matter faith or not <laughs> they're gorgeous um so i love those so let's dive right into it and get into july now i have not i've decorated my july but not with the kit given to us by the prayerful planner um that's june here we go july i have not got around to outlining and cutting the stickers for kiss cutting the stickers for um, what was created for J the month of July, but I did want to use up what was left of my Erin Condren um, July uh, monthly stickers that came in the celebration book, uh, the fifth edition. I don't have the cover anymore, so I can't really show that. So I just whited out the July 2020 over here, which I hate using white out, but I really wanted to use the sticker. So that's what I did there. And I just put the stars and the watermelon and the sparkles and stuff like that. I am going to go back and write in all the scriptures that um, are in the sheet. That's what this monthly calendar is for me. I just haven't done it yet. So I'm going to go back and write all these in. And that way, if I don't have this with me, I have this and, or I can't find it because sometimes I lose that sheet. <laughs> so I can just revert, refer back to the calendar. Um, but I will go back and do the date dots from the, um, what do they call? The sheet that they sent in for the month of July for the stickers that you can cut yourself and uh, take care of that. So this is my July 1st. And if you saw the video, you saw how I did this. I love the purples. It turned out really good. Um, discovering my identity in Christ is a really powerful, almost overwhelming experience right now. I realized just last night I was trying to fall asleep, and um, which I do have some trouble sleeping, but I don't have as much trouble falling asleep as I used to. Um, because of my identity in Christ and I made this connection last night because my Achilles heel in my sin nature is my thoughts and they drift and I argue and I push and I become prideful in my thoughts to myself that nobody really ever gets to hear but God does and he has convicted me and really pushed me to correct those so my attitude and behaviors can change along with what his will for me is and so um, this challenge has really pushed me to remember my identity in christ when i have those thoughts um, when i have arguments with my spouse or when i am out in public and things aren't going the way i expect them so um so this has been amazing for me. 
Uh, the first one was 1 Corinthians. Therefore, anyone in Christ that is grafted and joined to him by faith in him as Savior, he is a new cre creature, reborn, renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things, uh, the previous moral and spiritual condition have passed away. Behold, new things have come because spiritual awakening begins a new life. So, and I've talked about that one in a new other video, um, my last faith video for the Prayerful Planner, and that, I love that verse. I love how the month opened up and said, hey, we are attached to Christ, grafted together, and he guides us. Our old ways are dead, new ways are now here. So now we go on to, um, Romans 8 38 which was Thursday July 2nd for I am convinced and continue to be convinced beyond any doubt that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present and threatening nor things to um, to come nor powers nor height nor death oh I read that or n nor any other created things will be able to separate us from the unlimited love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord now all of these that I've written are in the amplified version so um, if you're wondering where I'm getting it it's especially if you see brackets like that it usually means it's the amplified version <laughs> um, Paul's letter to the Romans it sums up that nothing seen or unseen exists that can't separate me from Christ his love for me has no end or boundaries I'm grateful for his love and I am affirmed in my life today and that's what this challenge is about what is our identity in Christ what is the affirmations we are to tell ourselves in those weak moments that we just don't feel strong enough what can we remind ourselves that we are in a broken world but our strength comes from Christ, our identity comes from Christ, nothing can separate us from Christ. It's all about Christ and how we are here on earth, but this isn't our home. This is not our destination. Our death is not the final destination. Our death is the beginning of a new life. You know, here on earth we have an opportunity to surrender and turn our lives over to the Lord and and have new spiritual life here on earth that will continue forever after our death and we will still live forever that's what we were created for that was the whole intention in the beginning and when sin entered so did death and now we have to walk out our earthly life so we can get to our spiritual life that was already created for us so i love this whole identity in Christ thing. It's it's really been thought provoking. It's been emotional and really pushing me forward to think in every moment of every situation of my daily life to go, where's my identity in Christ in this situation? Where's my identity in Christ um, when I'm upset or overwhelmed or being hurt or whatever the situation may be? Um, let's see here. On Friday, July 3rd, was Isaiah 53, 5, and it said, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our wickedness, our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoing. The punishment required for our well-being fell onto him, and by his stripes, wounds, we are healed. We're no longer spiritually dead. We are healed and brought back to life. We can claim that no matter what situation we're in, the reassurance of that is amazing. And when I af did my affirmation and identity in Christ over here, I said, but he was wounded for my personal transgressions. My, um, let's see, my transgressions. He was crushed for my wickedness my sins, my injustice, my wrongdoings. We are born inherently into sin. That is what we're born into. That's how the world works. 
when you are conceived and you are born, you are born into sin. Only Christ can rectify that and change that. So I do have wickedness. I do have sins. I do have injustice. I do have wrongdoing against the Lord in my life when I am not, especially when I'm not walking with him. So the punishment for my well-being fell on him, Christ. (laughs) The punishment fell on Christ. So my well-being could be cared for. And by his stripes and by, um, or wounds, we are healed. You know, we may be born in sin, but when we turn from that and we turn to Him, that punishment that is required by God has already been fulfilled, has already been taken care of, has already been paid, and He did it for my well-being, me, and you. And so, you know, it fell on Him, and He took it, and we are healed we are alive spiritually we have forever we are reconnected and joined back with god that separated us from him sin separating us from him you know in the garden you know i am not alone in this fallen and broken world because christ is with me and he paid that price and god loves me so much he would really run after me and chase me and go you are my child I love you come to me and I just there is not enough thank you in the world (laughs) or gratitude in the world that you can give God for that right there I just think that's beautiful oh goodness so here uh, on July 4th I thought this was very good and done very well as far as picking, you know, Fourth of July and picking something that would be good scripture for that day. So this one is Psalms eighteen thirty two. Again, the Amplified version: The God who encircles me with strength and makes my way blameless. I'm blameless. I'm a sinner. I have injustices against people. I have wrongdoings in my sin nature. But I am created blameless because of Christ. I am a new creation. And before God, I am blameless. I have to repent. I have to learn. I have to go back and walk it out with Christ. But since I've been saved, I've been blameless. And that is the beauty. And God who encircles me and covers me, Christ is there with me and blanketing me with his strength to carry me through to help me understand and see and show um, what my sins are and my transgressions against others and him so that I don't do them again. Um, And this is a day I wrote where I'm remembering those who died for our nation so we all can live free. You know, the, the ultimate freedom is God and your salvation, but there are many people through the generations died all over the world for us so we can live in a country with freedom of religion. That is one of the most precious things to me. I can't imagine living in a country where I'm told there's only one religion and I couldn't have Christ. I just, I even thank God. I was like, God, thank you for choosing America to be my birth home while I'm on earth giving me that opportunity um, where I can't always have it in other countries. So I wrote over here the lie I tell myself. I'm not strong enough to do God's will. I'm not able to step out in faith and disciple others. The truth is I am strong enough because my strength is not my own but God's. I can trust him and I can step out in faith and disciple others in the truth of Christ. And I do so through this channel. That was my evidence. So I had saw something online. I was looking at um, 
the photos that they advertised the prayerful planner on Facebook. And one of them, they were writing in this section and it says the lie, the truth, the evidence. And I thought that was really cool. So I kind of applied that here and still refer back to my identity in Christ, the lie I tell myself. But the truth is, and that's my identity in Christ, and then the evidence, and that's what I wrote here. So that's what my 4th of July looks like. And mostly used Aaron Condren stickers from that, pa um, that um, what do they call it? Celebrations pack, um, like I did from the uh, monthly layout. And I just used the rest of them on here because I really wanted to use them for the 4th of July and have the sparkles and stuff because I love fireworks. Um, thankfully this year, I didn't think I was going to get to see fireworks, but I did get to see fireworks this year and I was thankful. We did social distancing and basically it was a drive-in fireworks show. <laughs> you just drove up, you sat in your car, and then you can get out in front of your car or whatever, but you had to be responsible for your own social distancing and protecting yourself. And there were no, like, there was nothing there. It was a fairgrounds, but there was no like games to play or activities or food or vending or anything. So <laughs> we still got to see the fireworks, but at the same time, it was weird, <laughs> but it was awesome. The fireworks were amazing. They were like right over our head and we're like, oh, wow. So that was awesome. That's why I love that page. Um, July 5th was Sunday. And um, the scripture for that one is 1 John 2, 12. And it says, I, I, the reason I like the Amplified in this one is all the versions that I read, the ESV, the NIV, uh, says, I'm writing to you little children or children. And I'm like, I, I don't like when they do that because I'm like, why are they writing to the children? And I'm thinking of a small child, not me as a child. But when you read on, you kind of realize, oh, we are God's children and things like that. So I love the Amplified because it says, I'm writing to you, little children, believers, dear ones, because your sins have been forgiven for his name's sake. You have been pardoned and released from spiritual debt, though his name, because you have confessed his name, believing in him as Savior. So... I love that scripture. I love that my identity is in Christ. I love that I am forgiven forever and I am saved by Christ, that he already paid the spiritual debt for all my sins. And I no longer, I well, should say I am no longer alone because I confessed his name. I believe in his name as my Lord and Savior. Let's see if I can find my pen to write that in. Sometimes I write faster than I think, and I skip words or letters or whatever. So, um, yes, I am forgiven because I confessed. I am, this is my identity in him. I am a believer. I am, I believe in his name, and he is my Lord and my Savior. So that that is my identity in Christ. And um, I absolutely love that reminder the way it is in First John. And I thank him for that. Uh, Monday, July 6th. Let's see. Mm, Ephesians 1, 5. He predestined and lovingly planned for us to be adopted to himself as his own children through Jesus Christ in accordance with the kind intentions and good pleasure of his will. It is his good pleasure to adopt us. We are not a burden to God. He wants us. He chases us. He, he, you know, he woos us to him and says, you are my child. I want you to be my child. So we, he chooses us. He loves us first. But we have to choose him back. So I love this. I love that we are adopted. I don't know much about adoption other than maybe adopting a couple gerbils and the heavy responsibility of that, which wasn't really that big. But at the same time, I felt the weight and burden of making sure they stayed alive and fed and the kids were taking care of them and stuff like that. Um, they've passed on since we bought them because they were like four and a half years old, four and four and a half years old. I think that's how long they lived. No, three and a half and four years old. So, which is an average life of 
uh, gerbils, from what I understand. So, <laughs> but in that experience of adoption, for us, and for me, that speaks volumes when I hear him say he adopted me because I'm a handful. Oh my goodness. I know there's sometimes I, I wonder if Christ is looking down at me like shaking his head. <laughs> like, girl, what are you doing? Um, trying to get my attention, trying to get me to remember my identity in him. And how amazing it is he is willing to adopt me into his family. So that's what I talked about. You know, my identity is in Christ, that he adopted me chose me, loved me, wanted me so desperately into his family that he sought me out personally. I am a child of God. That's my affirmation. I am a child of God. He is my father and I am his child. When I became a new creation, I became his and I thank you, God. So that that perspective of remembering I think that is so beautiful. And I think what I might do is just have print my own little calendar or come up with a wall calendar and just write these affirmations of identity. I am a child of God. I am forgiven forever. I am strong. I am healed. You know, I am loved forever. I am a new creation. All of these. This is who I am. That is my identity in him. Absolutely love that. Oops, that's the last page. So, now today, <laughs> July 7th, 2020. All right, Tuesday. So the verse for today was Colossians 2, 9 through 10. For him in all, the fullness of deity, the Godhead, dwells in the bodily form completely expressing the divine essence of God and in him you have been made complete achieving spiritual stature through Christ and he is the head overall rule and authority of every angelic and earthly power that is powerful Okay, the fullness of the deity, God himself, the fullness of him dwells in the body form, completely expressing the divine essence of God. Whew, what a picture. That's amazing. And in him, in Christ, capital H, him, Christ, you have been made complete, achieving spiritual stature. I'm completed spiritually complete through Christ he is the head of all rule and authority he has all rule he has all authority whether angelic or earthly power so no matter what's going on whether it's in the spiritual realm whether it's in the physical realm it doesn't matter <laughs> he has full authority and full rule over both realms we have nothing to be afraid of. We have nothing that he can't cover and take care of. And I put my full confidence in this because there's so much going on around every day through the generations that whether we can see or not see, he has full authority. And I want that to be something I remember when I'm in difficult times when I am confused or desperate or scared, I want to have that full completeness of confidence in him. And this is one way you can have that, just knowing your identity in him because he has all authority and rule over things seen and unseen. And he has made me complete. You know, once we become saved, we're complete. Yes, we grow in our faith. Yes, we grow to know the Lord. But once we're saved, regardless of how long we live and how much we study and what we do, once we're saved, whether we die the next moment after we're saved or die 50, 60, 70 years later, <laughs> we are already complete spiritually. And I completely submit my entire self to him because I can trust him 
because he has all authority and all rule. And that is what I kind of took out of this because I forget that. I try to have my own authority. I try to have my own rule. I try to put my own take on things as if I know what I'm doing. And I don't. I'm just imitating what I see in my culture. I'm imitating what I see in my own family, what I've learned and thought of growing up. Um, And it fails me every time. There's not a time it doesn't fail me. So those are my first seven days. Um, Those are my identity in Christ. Uh, I love thinking about it, contemplating on it, exploring it. And I'm excited to see what the next week says. And I do. I think I'm going to come up with a way of putting these affirmations up, maybe on a board or something like that, um, so I can keep remembering who I am in Christ every single day. So I hope that you like this video. And if you did like this video, I would love if you would give me a thumbs up. And um, if you want to see more of my videos, please subscribe. I do plan to do more. I'm not sure how I'm going to keep going forward from here, but I did want to get caught up on the videos I haven't been posting on my faith videos. But um, yeah, I have some ideas and plans. If there is a suggestion of something that you would like to hear more information on when it comes to Bible studies or faith-based and whatever kind of thing, um, I would love to hear your suggestions to see what kind of content you're looking for. And uh, we'll see what we can come up with. Uh, I have kind of bogged myself down with my budgeting side, but God definitely convicted me recently and said, what about your prayerful planner? What about your videos on that? You promised to dedicate your channel to that. And I'm like, oh no. (laughs) So um, as much as I love budgeting and I can do budgeting all the time, um, I have to stay into this and, um, and do more videos. So I will do more and I would love to hear from you on it. And um, I guess that's it. So I will see you next time. And if you need prayer or have comments, I have email in the description box below or just comment in the comment section. Have an amazing and blessed day and I will see you next time. Bye.